Welcome back to Harry's Take, everyone. This morning, I am very happy to have producer, writer, and more, Andrew today. Andrew worked as the executive producer of the Colin Coward Show on Fox for many years and also writes for the Polly and Tony Fusco Show on Fox Sports Radio. Andrew is very knowledgeable on podcasting and journalism, and I am thrilled to have him on to discuss these interesting topics with him. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning, and my my resume is very confusing, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> because I produce Colin Coward's podcast on the Volume Network, but I was just a producer on his show at Fox. So what happened was I started as a producer there, and then I went to go work for the XFL, and then it folded, and then uh, Colin luckily brought me on, and that's when I became executive producer of his podcast. Uh, so it's extremely confusing for everyone in my family because they really don't know where I work. But uh, that's that's that explanation. But thank you for having me here. Yeah, of course. Uh, so first off, uh, you just did this a little, but could you tell the viewers a little bit about uh, your background and some of the work that you do? Yes. So I am currently an executive producer at The Volume, uh, where I supervise all the shows on the network. So uh, Colin in 2020... You know, he has his show, The Herd on Fox. He decided he wanted to start his own media company. And that meant that he would have his own podcast on the network, and then we'd have different shows on the network. So at that point, I was brought on to produce the show, which meant um, helping Colin prep for the show, which he didn't need much of because he was already doing his own show and knew full well. You know, he'd just done three hours of TV and had a two-hour prep meeting for that podcast. So, you know, those were some very quick prep meetings. But a lot of the work that I did, which was interesting, because what changed is when I worked on The Herd, a lot of what I did was pre-producing. We'd have these meetings. They were very fun, exciting, deep, where we'd talk out the whole show. What I did at the with Colin on the podcast was more post-producing. So what that is, is Colin's recorded all this material. He has takes, he has a guest, all this stuff. My job was to edit it, which means like putting all the images on it, putting, you know, the frame that says Colin Coward podcast, making sure the ads that we needed got in there, all those bells and whistles, and then creating the YouTube thumbnails, uh, chopping up the clips, deciding with the titling of the YouTube it would be and what the description would be because all those factors go into what is going to help that show reach its target audience. So that that is the main difference between what I did on The Herd and what I do here. It's like, yeah, you do much more back end work. And then once you do that, like then there's cutting social clips and you're cutting social clips from the show and then you're then you're booking the next guest and it just keeps going from there. Mm hmm. So I know a lot of my viewers uh, watch TikTok, and I constantly see uh, the Colin, the Herd, TikTok. Uh, do you play any part in producing his uh, TikTok and other platforms, or mainly just the podcasts? So we have a, at the volume, we have a big social team. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, he has, he has his own team at the Herd that makes those TikToks as very successful. And then we have our own team that take things from the podcast. Now, uh, that's that's kind of like it can be a collaborative work sometimes where we're after a record we'll be like oh this was a great moment let's get that 30 seconds or um you know uh th this guest had something very interesting to say let's let's highlight that um and that needs that usually is it's such an important process because it has to happen very quickly you know with tiktok especially and the way those algorithms are working now you want to be after a game in that area where everyone's talking about it. Cause if you miss that, it's, it's, it's sometimes gonna be less than 24 hour window. If you miss it, the clip just doesn't perform as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also I know that you mentioned you worked for the XFL. What do you think about the XFL's merge with the USFL? I definitely think it had to happen. Um, you know, s spring football is it, it's, the, but, but let me let me back up here that what I, I think that, first of all, I think spring football is a good idea. And the reason I always thought it was a good idea was because when I was working at Fox Sports One, you realize how much sports networks need that type of content. They need, you know, a football game in April, May is just great. And that's what I think was the main difference between the first XFL and the second XFL. The first XFL was on NBC. Well, mm -hmm. at that point in 2000, well, 
they didn't, you know, NBC could put a rerun of Will and Grace there, you know, or other, I'm referencing shows from the 2000s, but, that, and that would have gotten big numbers. And, but now where you have all these different networks and especially sports networks, 24 seven, you need the content. Mm -hmm. If you have two rival football leagues <laughs> doing spring football at the same time, clearly that's going to split the audience and it's going to make both properties less valuable. Uh, so it just makes a ton of sense that these two places would, you know, two companies would come together and do this. And uh, I do think it's going to be successful. It's just, uh, I think it's guaranteed with the way sports media works right now. Wow, that's interesting. Um, also, uh, a bit to back up a bit, uh, how did you get into the podcasting field and the network field uh, in general? That's a great question. Um, I started out as a comedy writer after I graduated college. Uh, I, that was what I got into. And um, I had that, that bit, you know, when you... When I was younger, like when I was your age, like, you know, you have goals and you have dreams of what you want to do. And then as I got older, which is humbling, but it's the lesson, it's like, then you get into the reality of what that thing is and especially how you build a career in that business. And for me, when I was in comedy writing, I'm like, wow, this is a really up and down business. When you get jobs, it's great. But when you don't have jobs or you're hunting for jobs, it's scary. And I had like, you know, moderate success. Like I wrote for a Comedy Central show. It was a show called uh, The Showbiz Show with David Spade. That was fun, interesting. Then I went to go, I got uh, a, a writer brought me on to write for The Muppets. And then another writer brought me on to write for uh, the show called Word Girl on PBS. And there were some other jobs in there. But it was a very feast or famine in when I was working and when I wasn't. And um, mm -hmm. when I met... My girlfriend, who's now my wife, she's just looking at me, and this is 2012. She's like, "Do you really want to live this way, where you're jumping from job to job? It's terrifying." And she and I was like, "You know, you're right. Like, I don't." And I started to think of what I want to do, and I'd always have a love of sports talk, uh, mm -hmm. sports and sports. More importantly, sports talk. I found like I just listened to tons of sports shows, and I found that sports talk was an extremely um, creative world. You know, a lot of people who are outside of it just think there's it's just sports, but it's not. You know, there's so many other layers to what the conversations are, and nobody's more emblematic of that than Colin, who brings so many different angles to it. And luckily at that time, I was hitting the job boards like crazy, and Fox Sports 1 was starting in 2013, and I got hired to work as a writer on Fox Football Daily, thanks to a guy named Azzy McKenzie, who's just a great producer. And uh, that was... <laughs> We can get into that. That was an extension of the NFL on Fox show hosted by Kurt Menefee. It had Randy Moss, Brian Urlacher. Unbelievable experience. And then after a couple of years of working at Fox Sports 1, I'm going to accelerate the story because I've rambled on too long. Uh, they kind of changed the network. It became more of, oh, we're going to have opinion shows rather than just sports shows. And they brought Colin in. And as he said to me, hey, do you, we think you'd be a good fit for Colin. And luckily, I was brought on to that show. And I've uh, gotten to work with Colin for the past eight years or so. That's a great story. Uh, to back up a bit to your college experience, I know you studied uh, communications. What do you think it, it, it's important to do in college to prepare you for uh, the sports talk and the sports media field, especially if you're uh, a bit undecided uh, going into college? What do you think you need to focus on in college to really uh, prepare yourself for this field? That's a really good question. Um, you know, again, because of the changes, I graduated college in 2001, and the media business was so different. I mean, just completely different. And I can't even, there's no way to even underestimate that. It's been a seismic change. Um, so the, my approach was different than what it would have been now. But I'll say two things. The first thing is that my communication, studying communication really helped me in a very philosophical way, a, a very theoretical approach to what communication is. And I'll, to be specific about those things, it's like, here we are, we're on this, you and I both using cameras and how we use that camera. Like, am I filling up the frame? If I'm sitting back here, I'm far away from my mic. You know, I mean, it, uh, I, I look small if I if I'm small in the frame. All these things contribute to what the conversation is and how the person on the other end is interpreting this, 
right? Mm -hmm. And there was so many different, it, it opened my eyes to how many different factors there are in media that affect the way people consume media. So studying that, and, and I'm giving the broad strokes, really helped. But the other thing that I didn't do much of that I got to do more of at Fox was the more hands-on editing. Uh, that, I think, is the most important thing. Because in the year 2000, I had this professor named Paul Maceres, who was an amazing producer. The class was visual communication. And he told me, he said, writing is not going to be as important in the future. It's going to be video. Video is going to be the way we communicate. And of course, he was 100% right. And that seemed like a far off future at the time, but that is now our daily lives. But that means that the ability to edit video, and what I mean is, you know, using Adobe Premiere, using Final Cut, using all the tools that are out there helps so much. Uh, you know, can you even down to, can you light a scene? Uh, can you f operate a camera? If I was starting out now, I would want to be so technically savvy because you, you, because all the people in this business ultimately need someone to make this look good, make it happen. And if you can be that person, great. If you can be that person and also have sports knowledge and also know how to package material, then you will work forever in this business. Hopefully. You know, can't say anything for sure. But I know that's where I come from is that I really think, and this has been the past seven, eight years for me, learning the physical hands-on production has been the most important part. Wow, that's really interesting to think about the technical side of it. Um, uh, I don't know how familiar you, you are with uh, the Fox Sports commentating teams, but how do you think that Kevin Burkhart and Greg Olson – uh, the, the type of job they've done taking over the infamous uh, Troy, uh, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman. In this, yeah. Uh, I mean, I've had only limited experience. My aunt used to work for NBC Sports in the 80s. <laughs> and my aunt that you your family knows, and that's how we're here. She And I got to see, that was when I got to see like Vin Scully in action. I'd go into the booth and and I'd see the control room back there. You know, they'd be in the trucks outside the Orange Bowl, mm -hmm. outside the Super Bowl, and I'd see what was going on. And that's the way I remember it. So when I look at what, you know, these guys do, it is an unbelievable high wire act. <laughs> and people to think on the spot, to have all that information. And, you know, I saw it in the XFL too because Kevin Burkhart was doing some of the games. Joel Klatt was doing some of the games, Kurt Menefee, and the prep that goes into that, you know, how much they prepare, how they get to know each player, how they get to know the storylines. It takes so much work, you know, so when you see it on air and they're just, oh, they're stating facts or, you know, they see a play and they give you the background on that play. There is so many hours of prep that goes behind that. And then that they've got people in their ear all the time talking, we're going to commercial or, you know, uh, cameras down or something's going on. It is, I don't know how they do it. I don't have the stomach to do it, but they are clearly the best in the business. Yeah, they really do a great job. Um, I know that you've worked in writing and also producing. How do you think those two things differ and which one you like better after doing both? Hmm. Great question. Um, I think that writing prepared me well to become a producer. Um, and there's something that, you know, when I was working for Colin, still working for him, but specifically on The Herd. And he, I remember he would say, he said something one day when we were in our meeting. He said, Sport, sports is like a tapestry. And what he meant by that is it's this very, very long story that just keeps going. And what Colin really taught me, and it took me back to the writing, is that there are storylines in sports. Mm -hmm. And you want to connect yourselves to those storylines. And Colin does a great job of doing that. Like, you know, when we think of Baker Mayfield, we think of Colin because Colin was the one who came out and said he was undraftable. Now, you know, it, now, you know, that has in that moment, that was a very hot take. But, you know, people have now kind of backed away and been like, OK, maybe in that moment that was the wrong choice for the Browns. Uh, Russell Westbrook, he was on Russell Westbrook being, you know, too big a, a volume shooter and not a good contributor to a team long before he was building these storylines. So when things happened in the storyline, people would want to go to him. Like Skip Bayless has done that with the Cowboys. Stephen A to some extent has done with that with the Cowboys. 
And that is where I connect as a writer, because a writer is always looking for what is the plot? What is the story? Who are the characters? What's the twist? And in sports talk, there are so many people talking. There are so many people reacting to the same thing. But what separates the ones who really become the stars is the angle they have, right? The way they are selling the material. And that is what I really like about producing and what I said about post-producing. You're choosing the way to sell the material. You're choosing the way to say to someone scrolling through YouTube or scrolling through podcasts, hey, this is going to be a different angle in two or three words, like what the Cowboys got wrong. Like Mm -hmm. what if, what you know, like Cowboys just lost to the Packers, right? Everyone has so many opinions on that, right? But how, how could you sell that differently? Like, what the, cow- what the Cowboys need to do now, or the number one thing the Cowboys failed in the Packers, like ways that you're pointing out instead of just like Packers, Cowboys reaction. And it's that, it's that kind of, uh, you're telling a story in that way and you're advancing a story in that way. So in, in other words, uh, you use your background as a, a writer to craft the narrative and then you choose what will best portray it in the field of media once you have uh, the material and you can choose how to distribute it. That's a really good combination. Exactly. Um, and it also, um, what kinds of topics do you focus on uh, when, when writing um, for podcasts, especially do you have a specific sport that you're most interested in or do you kind of uh, deal with a, a bunch of different sports? Um, yeah, you know, uh, the more I've worked, so I started in this business in 2013, so 11 years in now, and I followed all different sports at that time, NFL, NBA, MLB, all that stuff. Now I'm mostly NFL. And the reason for that is NFL talk is just so much more widely consumed. Mm -hmm. NBA is good too, uh, and NBA is still very strong, but NFL is top. And one of the reasons I think why is that uh, baseball has become extremely statistical, analytical, right? Like we know, hey, if a guy has a 225 average and he strikes out, well, yeah, at a 225 average, like there's not much to debate there. Right. I mean, you get into contracts, but that's only in the offseason sometimes. And NBA, well, that's also become another analytical type debate. Right. But football has this almost mystical quality now because it's hard to know why things happen and why someone had a bad performance. And there's all these controversies because it's hard to officiate. I mean, NBA is hard to officiate, too. But it just it there's something about, and because it's so widely watched and we watch specific games, you know, NBA people don't watch specific games and react to it, right? If the, uh, let's just say um, the Bucks get blown out by the magic on a Tuesday night, they're still the Bucks. (laughs) Nobody's going to think, oh, the Bucks aren't making the playoffs. But, you know, if uh, the Chiefs get blown out by the Cardinals, (laughs) oh, this team might not, even make the playoffs, right? There's that more, and the also just the way the the um, the games work. I mean, we have games on a, you know, it's mostly Sunday, right? Sunday or Monday, and then you can react to them throughout the week. NBA, baseball, they're all constantly happening, shifting the narrative. So, just NFL is the the best game to talk about in this kind of medium. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I I'm I'm uh, I'm a big. Uh, I follow the NFL the most out of any sport. I think also, uh, as you mentioned, the limited amount of games 